After defining uh, uh, inventory items and stock uh, items to the to the system, you uh, have to basically get uh, some quantity of that item into the inventory of Dynamic 3i. Uh, this can be done in a in a couple of methods. So you can go right into the inventory and do an adjustment uh, or a physical inventory. But uh, in order to cover off the steps of of doing a simple purchase order in Dynamic 3i, which uh, as as everything else is very simple, we're going to take a uh, uh, the cycle of entering a purchase order for the item that was just set up. So we go into purchasing uh, under the uh, purchase order processing, and we'll enter a PO to that particular item. Now, right off the bat, it's asking me what vendor that I would like to place this purchase order for. Um, the uh, default vendor on the uh, item that we set up is there for um, automatic purchasing. When it comes to purchase order entry, it's going to ask me uh, where do I want to place this purchase order, and uh, and you know how do I want to. Uh, who do I want to send it to? Uh, certain defaults are, are set up, uh, such as me as a user, the uh, the warehouse automatically comes in. I can be as a user attached to a warehouse, and that can be overridden, as we can see. So I'm going to set out uh, a purchase order to uh, this ATI. Um, the item that we set up, I want to bring it into the Toronto warehouse, so I'm going to override this warehouse here. Um, the order date is today. Uh, I expect it to be shipped today. I can have a lot of turnaround. And I can go directly off to uh, the detail line here and start entering uh, the purchase order detail that I want. Uh, the vendor information that I entered here is defaulted, so if I wanted to see specific uh, vendor information here, or if it was happened to be going to a different address, or and needed to go to a different address other than uh, his main area or something like that. That could be changed and overwritten here as well too. Uh, any messages that I want I can put on there and the fact that I'm actually going to receive against this PO because it is possible to send out uh, uh, purchase orders which out without actually receiving in the case of uh, drop shipments and stuff like that which I'm not going to actually receive the goods. So what I'm going to do now is um, for this particular vendor I can go right to the detail line the item that we had set up M3A. It will default in here. The purchase quantity. Uh, let's uh, let's purchase. Uh, oh, sorry. We're just going to. Uh, I'm going to clear that because I. You can enter in uh, the description there as well. I'll just get that the default description. In the case of miscellaneous items, you can override the description here and, and key it in. And we're going to purchase. Uh, uh, we'll purchase a hundred of these items and get them into stock. Uh, we'll bring them in at a cost of uh, uh, five. Uh, doesn't really matter. Cost per one. Any reference information? Maybe I'm purchasing this for a uh, for a project or something like that, um, or a specific uh, item, or specific specific repair item or something like that, um, or inventory. Uh, the general ledger account for the item, again, there's a whole uh, general ledger the, being the umbrella. There's a lot of maintenance in the system uh, set up. Ultimately, though, this is detail information, and I, uh, I can override it or enter it. And uh, I can see that the total has come down for $5.35 for a purchase of 100 And I can actually save this to the system now and generate a purchase order. And we'll get that 8158. Uh, at this point, it's got to go out uh, to the vendor. So I can go directly from entering the purchase order directly to go to go and print that. Uh, once it's printed and processed, uh, the, the defaults here will, will come up for this. And uh, our system will print this format and I'll print it to screen here and we'll get the purchase order uh, in, a, in a state where we can actually receive it. Uh, system goes out and according to a default format print off a, a purchase order for uh, to the vendor which can go out the door um, because he con is, a, is a vendor that we mail the purchase order out to. Once we've actually done that the um, the status of the purchase order is uh, at a goes to a printed status so we take this uh, order 8158 and we now are in a receiving function which is out in Dynamic 3i and go into the receiving functionality. We'll do a stock receipt by purchase order and we'll call up that purchase order that we had 8158 key that in there and we come up with the uh, M3a microfiber and at this point, I can receive outstanding. Uh, Dynamic 3i purchase receiving could have multi lines down here and can just uh, simply receive it, or I could actually go in here and, and key it in. Uh, the simplest way and the easiest way is to receive outstanding, which simply uh, fills in all the fields for you, 
puts in the cost, it, uh, it final flags it, which in Dynamic 3i is simply saying that I'm not going to do any more receipts against this PO, so I don't want it sitting on any of my uh, outstanding receipts or outstanding purchase order reports. Uh, I've received it fully, it's final, it, it's gone. Uh, in the case of only partial receipts, I would not finalize it and I'd probably have to, I would have to key in here that I only received, say, 50 of it. Uh, but receive outstanding, fills it all in, I simply save this and we will get a uh, receipt generated down here, receipt number 503, which now is available as far as uh, reports and stuff like that and uh, the receipts that were made against this purchase order for this particular item. Once that receipt is done, I have inventory for that particular item in, in stock and the uh, purchase order is uh, basically ready and, and in a state of waiting for the uh, vendor to send an invoice that can be matched uh, on the AP.